joining Paranormal XL for week 16. It's been an amazing 16 weeks, thanks to all of you. We announced our live event coming up. That will be on Saturday, August 10th, starting at 5 p.m. How excited are you? I'm really excited. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, It yes. really is. I can't keep focused on like my daily things because of it, really, because I'm like, oh my god, we could do this, and we could do mm -hmm. this, and this, and this. And the, the place we're going to be at has so many possibilities. It's a really cool place. Yes, and like I, I posted on the Facebook that... Depending on, we're going to see how this one goes, but I got some things hopefully lined up I can look further into for like Grand Rapids, do Battle Creek area, uh -huh. for, for bigger venues. Yeah. So, yep. you know, so we can get more people so you guys can come in and see what we're all about. Us. Yeah. Meet have us. Fun, and connect. Yeah. Get involved in the podcast. I really want you guys to be able to tell your own stories. Like that's what I'm excited about. See these people oh, face yeah. to face instead of just reading it, having yeah. them come on and. Exactly. Bring some friends with you. Yeah. At all else, you're going to have a good time and laugh. And we were even talking about doing at-home parties, too. Yes. Where they can have at-home parties, like a Tupperware party, but a para party at home. And yes. And we can come in, do readings and paranormal yeah. teaching and investigate your home or a local spot. Yeah. Yeah. You just let us know that you want one. And if you don't want your home done, let us know your location. We'll find a place. Even if it's a cemetery. A lot of people are into that. A lot of people don't admit it. <laughs> but it is. It's kind of fun once you get going mm -hmm. with it. it it yeah. really is, and nothing to be scared of, especially if you have the right people with you. So keep looking on the Facebook page for that. If you want tickets for that, um, you can email us directly because we have tickets as well, or you can order them from Facebook. Yeah. I got yep. a link right on there for you. If you have any questions on that, feel free to contact us too, whether it be via Facebook, via email, Messenger, whatever Whatever you need, because we're going to answer your questions on that, because we want to see all of you. It, it is. And it's going to be our first one, so yeah, we're going to be nervous, and but it's going to be fun. It it's going to be, be super fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, also, we do have a Patreon set up, if you're interested in checking that out. That is where, for those of you that don't know, it is where you donate money a certain amount, and there's different levels, and you can also donate... Um, your own amount that you want. We have levels starting at a dollar a month, or you can do a one-time donation of a dollar. And all that does is by no means do you have to. Like, like that's not what we're doing. I'm not asking you guys for money. We're not. I want to make that clear. Like, that's not it. All the cool podcasts have one, so I kind of want to jump on that train well, too, you know. because we're cool. <laughs> but you also get, if you go on the page, there's going to be a link. In the show notes, and there's a link throughout the Facebook on it, and I will keep. I'll try to do that one once a week on the Facebook. Um, you, you can just click on it, and it'll take you into the different levels that you can get into. What you get per different level, you know, you, you get things for paying money, or I said there's a one-time thing where you can pay, and then you get something. Just check it out if you got time. If not, just keep listening. Like that's yeah. really all we want. We love you guys. You guys just are download. Great. Yeah. We're just letting you guys into our normal conversations that we have as mother and daughter anyway, so... Yeah, you might as well join our, join our bat shit crazy. Yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But like I said, by no means, it's no pressure. It's not like we're not going to do this because of somebody didn't donate. That That's not even what we're going for there. But I did want to get one of those set up because we have been asked about it. Um, like I said, you can find that <clears throat> link throughout the Facebook and show notes. If you do follow the Facebook page, then you know what we are talking about this week, which is the afterlife and all of its possibilities. So let's talk paranormal. Yay. <laughs> um, first, I guess I'll go through the definition. We're going to kind of take this particular one and kind of go back to where we started, where I go through the definition of what we're talking about first, because that's what we're going to do, because I said... <laughs> I'm the daughter and I run the show. I'm That's just kidding. Right. No, I'm you're not right. kidding. <laughs> you are grounded. You Get in the goddamn corner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just kidding. You mean I can't go to work? How no, sad. No. That is sad. Yeah. Oh. You're, you should be sad. Here, I will give you Austin's number and <laughs> you can call him and tell me. She's grounded. 
Yeah, just let me have a couple of glasses of wine first. Okay. I'll do anything. Oh, tonight's drink of choice is sex on the beach. Delicious. Mm-hmm. The definition of afterlife is the belief that the essential part of an individual's identity or the stream of consciousness continues after the death of the physical body. According to various ideas about the afterlife, the essential aspect of the individual that lives on after death may be some partial element or the entire soul or spirit of an individual, which carries with it and may confer personal identity or, on the contrary, may not, as an in Indian nirvana. Belief in the afterlife is a contrast to the belief in oblivion after death. That's very true. Oh, I, I mean, every every religion has their own belief system and how it happens. Yes. But in the end, like I've always said, it doesn't matter the path. It's all the same end. All of it is. And um, we go somewhere else. We do. And we, we cross over and we've talked before in other episodes about the different dimensions that mm-hmm. all vibrate to a different level. So what happens is when we cross over, we cross over to the vibration that we match so there's different levels of the afterlife because we all have lessons to learn sort of like um serial killers when they cross over they're going to go to one of the lowest dimensions and they're going to stay there until they cross over or they come back and they reincarnate to learn more life lessons i think at some point we were all serial serial killers and murderers and that's why we just we've just learned exactly and we've just learned our lessons as we go and every time Every time we learn a lesson, we go higher up. Okay. We change That's energy. Horrible. It's a higher vibration. That's a horrible thought. You just made me feel really, really bad about myself. You should. Now, again, this is her belief. This does not have to be your belief. I'm looking at the microphone <laughs> like it's our actual life. I'm okay. like, this is your belief. <laughs> <laughs> Going all cross-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. That, you know, and every, every person has a different way of believing it. But at the mm-hmm. same time, mm-hmm. it all holds its own truth. Right. I said, essentially, we are going somewhere else. Definitely. After. So I have talked to, this is a touchy subject. It really, really is, because we could get into religion on it, because religion is what teaches us about the afterlife, I think. Well, that's how we start mm-hmm. learning about it, you know. Well, religion, again, we could get into, the, that could be a podcast all in itself, yeah, all it about could. the different religions and whatnot. Just, but like she said, essentially, it's all, all the same end game. Well, see, I, I believe in the afterlife, but I don't believe you go to hell if um, if you don't believe in God like everybody else's way. I think essentially there is a hell that's coming back to Earth and reliving the same life lesson all over again, or just like the the serial killers who go to the lowest vibrational. Now, would you think that's purgatory? Or do you think this is purgatory? I would essentially. Well, sometimes I would feel. I think this feels like purgatory. I don't know. I've always been fascinated with purgatory. I actually have a a blurb. <laughs> On purgatory. Somewhere. Well, you know, through meditation, <laughs> I've been shown that when we cross over, we walk down a hallway of light. And then before we actually move on to where we're supposed to, we are set to um, a review room. And okay. we're there to review our whole life so that we can see the lessons we were meant to learn and go through all those emotions of the good and the bad so that we can evolve. Because that's why we're here is to the evolve. we missed. Yeah. And hopefully remember that. I can't remember if this was a meme that I saw or something, but it was, what if the afterlife is, like, because everybody says they see a white light. What if that white light is you being reborn? Like, instantly like that. How scary is that? Like, people have all these different theories. I don't want to say even beliefs, but what if? You know, the what yeah, if? what if? I love playing the what if game. I that really is kind do, of a fascinating a idea. And probably for some it is like that. The ones who... Didn't do it the way they were so supposed you, to, and they had to do it all over. Essentially, again. believe that it is. We still have the same end game, but essentially, it's it is different for everybody depending on what life lessons they've learned. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. What what path they wanted to walk, in general. Hmm. The the whole point the whole point of our life is to get back to um, where we came from, but to realize where we came from while we're still here, not once we cross over. That's our goal. Right. Is to evolve and ascend so much that we can completely connect with our higher self that's on the other side still. We have ourselves and then we have our soul self on the other side. The whole, the whole point now is to connect them right here. So do you think, this is going to sound so weird, but since getting into this, I, I'll be driving to work and I'm like, why would you even think something like that? It's what, that what if game again. Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, okay, what if your conscious, conscience is your higher self? 
Because essentially that's what tells you this is bad, this is good. And whether you listen to that or not. In a way it is. Because you have your self inner voice. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in a way it is. It's um, the whole white light energy and realizing that there's no negative thoughts, that there's only love. And to have your vibration so high that nobody can steal that power away from you. And sometimes your thoughts, too, are your guides and spirit connecting with you. Okay. So that, you know, one day you turn left, and if you would have turned right, even though normally you turn right. Right. And then there was a huge accident. And then you're thankful that you're thankful to God that you didn't turn right. It's it's sort of like that. Those little those little thoughts that get put in too. Those are your guides and your angels maneuvering you. That, okay. Yeah, because you do essentially get living your day to day life, going to work, and blah blah. You get in a life routine, mm-hmm. and sometimes you're right that it does get thrown off. So the way I, the way I see it is our our guides and angels and spirit are, are sort of like our road signs and our traffic lights. Where, like, you could use astrology and other means like numerology as a roadmap from God. Okay. And I think after it's all said and done, once you reach that point, a portal is open for you so that you can cross back over and, you know, to the afterlife. The energy that's created by passing over opens that portal and you cross over into the afterlife. Until the next time around. We're, hmm. we, we never die. Our bodies do. I think, you know, I feel Our like if some... Suits. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like, you know, some people would learn to see it differently. They would they would see death differently. Some people just won't. We had a guy comment on one of the Facebook um, posts that I had made. He wasn't negative by any means, but, well, kind of. And he said, well, I don't know if he was just trying to get something started or not. Because when I reacted nicely and kindly, because that's what I do, I don't have a mean bone in my body. Mm-hmm. I wish I did sometimes. Yeah. I need to, but I know you're trying to teach me. I know. Huh? <laughs> Stand my ground. I got it. I got it. But he said that you don't believe in this crap, do you? Or something like that. And I said, everybody is, oh, what were, I don't remember my exact words, but everybody is entitled to their own opinion. But then he came back and thanked me for not biting his head off. Oh, that's nice then. Yeah. Well, right. And I said, well, I could have taken that completely the other way, but I'm not. First of all, that's not me, and that's not what I believe. Just because I believe in certain things, I don't expect the next person to, you know. Well, yeah. Because everybody has their own path to what they plan for themselves. Yes, yes. But I, I would believe that that gentleman is one that, well, clearly doesn't believe, well, in paranormal stuff, but so much goes into paranormal that it's insane. But essentially, yeah. when people say, I don't believe in the paranormal, okay, the paranormal is freaking huge. Okay, we got paranormal, then we have our our... I don't want to say reality because even then, half a reality is paranormal for some people. Like, yeah, it, it's a such a great area that, that what one thing in his life, or not even just him, but anybody, could be paranormal, but they're not going to classify that as paranormal. And yeah, I got yeah. way too much time to think, <laughs> and I get like way off the grid when I get thinking about this stuff. So I'm like, you know, you know, what if, you know. And, and I, yeah, but people get so negative on the paranormal. And, they do. And when you do talk to people out there, you have to be careful with that because, again, religion gets brought in or just personal beliefs. And people, they defend that mm-hmm. as you should. Yeah. As you should. If you're getting attacked, by all means, but don't lower your vibration to somebody that's giving you crap because that's they're just trying to get a rise out of you. Exactly. Why give them that satisfaction? You know, you know that you're mad at them. They don't need to know that. Like, hey, whatever, whatevs, and walk away. Or whatevs, you want to go have a beer? You yeah. know, kill them with kindness. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody does think differently, and even when it does come to the the afterlife, especially though, I I feel just from even just talking to people. Well, they do, because just, you know, so many different religions have different processes they go through when, you know, they cross over. Just like the Egyptians would go through the long process of, you know, mummification, because they mm-hmm. believed that you had to preserve the body. So, because I think the Egyptians believed that there was two parts of the soul. One part that stays with the body, and the other part that moves on to the afterlife. So, they would preserve the body, and like, you know, literally like 12 different steps in their their mind's eye so that the body, the soul of the body would be at rest and not come back to haunt. You know, there's, huh. there's so many different 
ideas and the way they do things. Just like Native Americans, they used to, you know, I'm not going to get in like I'm an expert because I'm not sure which tribes, but there were certain tribes that burned the body. Okay, yeah. Versus Marion. Well, you see that. Yeah. Even on, um, and if anybody knows why, that'd be great. Like, you you see that stuff. I mean, that's all these, the ancient religious practices that still practice in Mm -hmm. parts of the world that, you know, we'll never get to see. But, yeah. Everybody has their different way. Mm hmm. It's so weird to think about that everybody's got such a different way and all the different beliefs and stuff. That's why I posted that question on Facebook. I was curious. I wasn't going to sit there and fight with anybody because I don't necessarily believe that what I think is right. And I said it in the last one. What I want to believe and what is, I, I won't know what is until I get there. But what I want to believe is that we all have our own heaven. Yeah, our own happy place. Yes. So let's hang out there for a while if we need to be reincarnated. Cool. You know, hope I come back as like a beautiful butterfly. You know, that's that'd be great. I love butterflies. We saw one at the cemetery the other day at Grand Haven. That thing was huge. Oh, I saw another one with the kids, and I was like, "I this is the craziest thing. I can't believe I didn't tell you this." So I'm like, "How the hell am I gonna get out of that place?" <laughs> oh my god! And I'm driving around in it, and I'm like, when we stop, we get sidetracked because there's like two really, really pretty deer. We're like, "Oh, they're so pretty!" So we had to get pictures, of course. When we're driving, I'm like, I don't even know how to get out of here. I went through around the same part of it like three times. I'm like, what in the hell? I get back in the car. And I'm like, I'm looking around. I'm like, okay, we need to go that way. But I'm like, I thought I said it the last time. It was like a <laughs> labyrinth. I was like, holy crap. I better get a prize when I get out of here. But then a huge monarch butterfly was like flying, landed on the car. And I'm like, what do you want? And I'm like, yeah, I'm talking to a like crazy person. My kids are looking at me like, but it like did like a zigzag. For me to, like, follow. And they're like, it got us out. It was the weirdest thing. Did you look up the spiritual meaning of a, of a butterfly? No, I just assumed that it's a wonderful thing. Haven't that, I taught that's you what anything? I, well, that's what I told my mom. Because like, a monarch landed on my mom one day at work. And she's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> My biological mom. Mary is my mom, too. I got a, a bunch of them. <laughs> but I got Mom Lisa and Mama Mary. Those are my, my main moms. <laughs> but she's like, we're at work. And she's like, oh, I said. Leave that there. Well, it, like, jumped off from her, sat on the table, and, like, doing its, like, little weird thing with its <laughs> with its arms, and, like, looking at her. I said, you can't shoo that away. She was like, why? Because that's Aunt Jane. I love messing with her. Not that I totally believe that, but I know that that gives her some sort of comfort. So I tell her those things because it comforts her, essentially. And she's like, oh, I think you're right. <laughs> and then so she's before the guys got out there to be like Lisa you're you whoa <laughs> take your meds <laughs> she, she was like well hi Jane you know and it jumped back on her I'll see and then it then it fluttered mm-hmm. away again you know just did it all happy day. yeah I was like oh, don't shoo that away it's a pretty bug you know it's, it could be Aunt Jane you never I'm not know. gonna say no you never but know again we don't know about the afterlife even at her funeral, because she was always the matriarch of the family. Mm-hmm. Essentially, butterflies are like that, too, when, with their colonies and whatnot. So I always like to think that, like, when I think about my Aunt Jane. I saw it was kind of cool. I was like, Mom, what are you doing? Don't squish it. But, yeah, yay. <laughs> and pr- and then the butterfly probably came from some kind of portal mm-hmm. from the afterlife to send a message. Because I think that's what happens all the time. I think once we cross over, spirit uses those portals to come through and connect. Even if it's just for a brief moment, they come over and then they can go back over. They use the natural portals. And this, there's natural portals all over. You know, people create portals, sometimes on purpose, sometimes without knowing. And then there's just natural portals all over the world. There's portals that go to the afterlife and there's even portals that go to hell. So you just learn about those and stay away from them. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, if right. If you're a smart cookie. You'll stay away. Stay away from stay hell. Stay away. Um, what was I going to say? Eventually, when my mom is ready, Mama Mary, you need to talk to her. I'd love and to. And actually, Dee Dee, I went to see my cousin Dee Dee, which her mom was my Aunt Jane. Um, and I was telling her about the time that we had, I brought the spirit box and Mm-hmm. In my mom's car, and it was going nuts. Didn't do nothing in my car. Did did stuff in her car, and it freaked her out or whatever. And she's like, you know, Dee Dee thought that was cool, and I wanted to tell her face to face. I didn't want to like, you know, yeah, text, text it to it. her mm-hmm. or whatever. 
And she'd all, she was like, that's so cool. How'd your mom? I said, oh, my mom went ape shit over it. Like, she, <laughs> she was like, nope, 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 nope. You know, she wants nothing to do with what I do. She's just not ready. But she said when she is ready, she does want to talk to you to see if. I would like to think that Aunt Jane is, is crossed over. Of course. Because she was such an amazing person. You know what I mean? Like, like she has no reason to come back. Maybe she's already reincarnated into something else, if that is the route that we take. Or she's at her higher self, and she's like, she's I good. See her, um, I see her as an angel, not like a permanent yeah. angel, but I see her in white, and for some reason I feel... Right on my right side of my chest, underneath my shoulder, I feel her energy there. So I almost feel like if anybody were to feel her, they would feel kind of like a warm sensation right here. Not in the back. I don't feel it in the the back, which is weird. But I I feel it in the front that they would feel kind of like a a kind of not a lump, but maybe a palpitation or a warmth or a tingly feeling Mm -hmm. is what I would feel. Sort of like, and it would kind of spread if you took the time to connect with it. I think that's her way of... Like her hands on you, mm-hmm. holding you. That's the way I see her. Yeah, I see her clearly too. I, was, I, I that's I want to picture her as an angel, like, like she is. But I but I good. see her in like like a fluffy angel. What, what are those things that you would put around your neck that would be all fluffy with feathers? A boa. There you go. That's why I see her having on. I could see her having a boa. I bet she's living a fabulous life up there, or wherever she is. I bet she is. But I know she is looking out for my mom. Oh, yeah. Not that I totally believe, but that's what I want to believe. Well, because it makes you feel better anyway, regardless. Right. So why not believe if it makes me feel better? You know, she is in the afterlife. I want to hope that she's somewhere good because she deserves that. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, it's, yeah, I could go out all day about my Aunt Jane. (laughs) She she shows me um, Care Bears and a rainbow. I I see, um, what's the yellow Care Bear? Sunshine. Sunshine Is that Sunshine Bear? Bear? My Sunshine Bear. Maybe I'll ask Dee or Melissa about that. That's what I see. Because that's from the 80s, the Care Bears, and that's when we were all kids. I mean, that's just that yeah, we all have had to. the Care you'll Bears. Yeah, you'll have to let me yeah. know. But that's what popped in my head is the rainbows, and I feel like it was like a conversation of some sort. Pretty well could be. Yeah. She was a nice woman. A good woman. She's a lot like my Grandma Beulah that passed away when mm-hmm. I was super young, but she kind of took her spot in the family. And that's why I just think that she's... Because she did accomplish so much and she did help people and I and I think that she served her purpose as far as this life goes mm-hmm. for her. She served her purpose in this life. Yeah. So I, I would love to think that, you know, she's not in limbo somewhere. In oh, never. Scary nope. purgatory. Nobody does he, I don't know why I've ever since Supernatural. I'm like, I need to learn about purgatory. So with that being said, I'm going to rein it back in here. <laughs> <laughs> I do have, let's, let's discuss what purgatory is. Yeah. Well, what... What the intro web, the inter, er, internet <laughs> says purgatory is. The notion of purgatory is associated particularly with the Catholic Church. In the Catholic Church, all of those who die in God's grace and friendship will still imperfectly purified are indeed assumed their eternal salvation. Remind me at the end of this, this, this blurb here. I have a comment if I remember it when you remind me. <laughs> But after death, they undergo purification so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the joy of heaven or the final purification of the elect, which is entirely different from the punishment of the damned. The tradition of the church, by reference to certain texts of scripture speaking of a clean cleansing fire, although it is not always called purgatory. See, with Catholics, are they the ones that you go in and you confess your sins and everything's good? Mm Mm-hmm. So why would anybody go to purgatory then if you're going to, I can't even think of what they call it, confession. So if you're going to confession and you're a true Catholic and you're going to confession to say whatever and then you do seven Hail Marys to cure yourself of whatever bad that you did, well then how can you even believe in purgatory because everybody's forgiven if you're a true Catholic. That is a good point. So I would say, you know, people can consider themselves Catholic, but... I wouldn't consider myself a true Catholic unless I did everything that the Catholic Church which, required me to which do. Which makes me think, too, because um, when if, if you're a Catholic and you commit suicide, you're not allowed really to have a funeral. Because it's really? con- yeah, it's considered a sin. So right. it takes me to the point, like, what, what, what kind of portal opens for you when you've committed suicide or somebody has taken your life? 
I have a thing. Does that right now. does that create a, a negative portal? I really hope not. Does that take you to purgatory? Because Destiny, last weekend, last Saturday, her friend Claire from Iowa committed suicide. Oh. 17 in her grade. Destiny was friends with her in school. Destiny said she was highly bullied. You know, she showed me pictures. Because we were driving, riding in the car and all of a sudden she just starts crying. And I'm like, Destiny, what's wrong? And she's like, Mom, and explains it to me. And I'm like, oh, crap. So we came back home because I'm like, Thanks. I know she takes bullying to like, I want to say a whole new level because that just sounds bad, but she did have, you know, Destiny's anti-bully army when she was mm-hmm. younger and stuff. She was very anti-bully and it, she was like, she's like, mom, I'm more mad than I am sad because, you know, she got bullied in that school. Girls threatened to run her over with their car. Jeez. Like, like right out front. I was on the phone with her right out front. And I'm like, Who, what? Sorry, honey, I'm 600 miles away, but I'll... What? You know, and her dad got kicked out of the school because he went there and, like, demanded that they do something and they weren't doing anything. She's like, Mom, I'm just so mad because I tried to go to the office and talk to them about, you know, stuff that she was going through. They didn't want to listen. Well, maybe someone should talk to the news. Uh, They need to. It's so bad. And, you know, and I... You know, I explained it to her dad when he called me the other night and stuff, you know, what was going on with her. And he was like, oh, my gosh, she didn't tell me. And then I was like, well... No, because she didn't want you to, like, go up there and then get in trouble for going up there, you know, because he gets it. I But I, I would hate for, okay, now that there's just different levels of committing suicide and where I think they go, because I don't know. I don't know where anybody goes. Nobody does. If you claim you do, I'm going to call it out. You're, you're full of shit because we don't know. Um, but I would hope those ones that felt that they had no choice, because she was still so, she was a baby still. Yeah. She was 17. We don't know clear, our emotions, our our chemical imbalances are way off when we're, you know, 13 through uh-huh. even 23, 24, you yeah. know. I, I would hope that she's not in a bad place because she left a bad place. And to leave a bad place to go to another bad place, and she didn't, she, you know, she wasn't addicted to drugs and did it Find when she was high there. or, you know. And that just, I really hope that. You know, she's not stuck in a purgatory. Is that that would be horrible. It would. But that was such a hard, it was a very hard conversation to have with Destiny. That why the young lady did that. And, you know, if anybody that knows Claire is listening, you know, my heart's with you. Yeah. You know, because I had to be there for Des to pick up the pieces and stop it. It's a, uh, you know, and if you're a listener and you are mean to her, Why? <laughs> That, that again's a whole other podcast by itself, which I may let Destiny sneak a mini in there sometime. We throw it out on a Wednesday. Yeah. That type of thing. Um, cause I know she's got a lot of. You should have her thoughts. write some stuff, some poems. And that she does. She actually has a blog that she's been writing on and working on and stuff, but the, the bully thing really, uh, really gets her and she does want to start the, cause her dad asked her about the, doing the Destiny's Anti-Bully Army again. Well, she went to talk to the counselor at school last year in Iowa, and they said she couldn't. But then there's all these other kids that can have, like, a Lego club or a Magic Card club or Pokemon club, but she couldn't do the Anti-Bully club, and that's when her dad got kicked out of the school because he was like, what do you mean? Yeah. You know, that, what? Like, you guys aren't doing anything. She wants to do something. And most schools up here in Michigan, they have something in place. Not that they fully back it up. Some are way better than others. But there are kids getting involved in this, that, which is good. That can change everything. Yeah, yeah. Get the teenagers involved in it. And then who's going to want to bully them? Because that's not the cool route, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we need to rein this back in. Sorry. <laughs> so yay, purgatory. But I hope... And she's so, because we got into the thing with suicide, where you go with suicide. I think that's a big question for everybody. Yeah. You know, what kind of portals open? Where do you go with it? Do you sit there for a while? You know, is it just a blank, empty space? I'm, I'm curious to research that and to see. Yeah. To find out. And if anybody has any ideas, uh huh. You know, write them in. Oh, for sure. It, I, I personally would like to think it depends on the situation of the suicide. Really, and I only say that because there are so many, you know, when Destiny did do that anti-bully thing, 
we put together a softball tournament. We raised a bunch of money for another girl that was the age of 13. Yeah. She was 13, you know, and for 13 to know that there's no, to think that there's no other way out. You know, I, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine either of my kids thinking that there's no other way. Like, that, oh, yeah. it's bad. But then to go, okay, because you can't bring them back because they're gone. But to think that if they went to hell or purgatory because of their decision, yeah, it was a shitty decision, but yeah, they weren't like, mature enough, I guess, in the brain to decipher, you know. I don't know. Suicide's a hard Hard one. And again, because we don't know where we go, you know. And you know, that also goes back to people that have like near death experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them are kind of the same. Then you get some that are like way different. Way off the wall. Yeah. So that's why I would like to think everybody's got their own place that they're kind of going to go, essentially. Whatever they can resonate with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's tons of different places they say um, that have like natural porters. This one is called, and I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing this right, the the Messiah in Nicaragua. And this is a volcano, and it's like, you know, always filled with fire and smoke continuously. And it's described as, like, an endless abyss beyond the crater mouth. Like, there's you can't see anything other than the fire. And so they say that this is one of the portals. It's a natural portal on Earth. But I have yet to find any kind of natural portals in, um, in America. I looked. And so if anybody knows of any that they can prove, Now, do you think that's know. because, like, well, America, you got to think, because, well, before America, it, everything was, you think there's not, not enough history here, per se? I don't know. Where, yeah. where maybe natural portals came from back when they did They've stuff They've always been like there. That. Yeah, yeah. And that is a possibility. Yeah, yeah. B- because, you know, it was before Columbus brought the big old boat over, you know, and whatnot. Maybe they are just over overseas. Cause this one, like, um, America. <laughs> there's one that's called Pluto's Gate over in Turkey. And they call, they call this, like, the entrance to, um, Hades, so to speak. It's, um, it's a cave in P- Pamukkale. <laughs> Don't hate me for that. You might want to look it up. But, uh, <laughs> it was, um, which was once an ancient city. But there's like breathtaking hot springs and there's a reputed burial site of St. Philip. It's a lo- located in the ancient temple where pilgrims sought visions and prophecies. The gate was supposed to be protected by toxic fumes which would kill like any non-priest who tried to enter it. An inscription nice. at the mouth of the cave refers to this legend. And the deadly fumes are still there. Carbon dioxide gases that kill living creatures that get too close. But that one's said to be a gateway to hell. Why would anybody try that? Well... <laughs> I think I think it's interesting that, you know, it seems to be that it was protected by priests. What's, you know, if it's true or not, I don't know. How do you think it was protected by priests as a warning? Like, don't go? To keep for, people safe? Right, right. Yeah. Like, like, they were more of the saviors for us. It could be. I wouldn't want to go to hell if it exists. Um, no. Not at all. And here's another one that has a connection to Hades. It's called the Twins Cave. Israel. So for my take and my research, I've seen a lot of things have to do with caves or circular yeah. entrances. Anything that has a high vibration to it and a circular entrance. Those would typically be portals and even water. Water can generate portals, which I guess would make sense because it has its own energy in itself and air, which moves energy. Right. So that kind of makes sense. This one's in Israel and... um with this, there's a story behind it that says Hades fell in love with a beautiful girl. She was a daughter of the ha- the harvest goddess Demeter. He kidnapped the girl, took her to the under- underworld. But before her, um, before her mother could find her, the girl ate the seeds of the pro- pomegranate and was forever no. bound to the underworld. No wonder they taste disgusting. They are horrible. Yes. I don't like them. And then she spent <laughs> three months with Hades, and then the rest of the year. She would resurface and spend time with her mother. So it's been a long time legend that these caves take you to the underworld because this is where he took her to take her to the underworld. Interesting. I'm surprised nobody. Well, I guess I don't know. We should get on the YouTube and see if anybody's explored that. Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna do it because I'm a chicken shit. 
No. So. Well, first of all, I ain't going to fly over no ocean. Well, uh, that too. You'd have to give me a lot of Xanax or something. <laughs> so when we went up to California, they were, they told us that they, we were doing like a loop around around the ocean. And we're like, oh, no, no, no. See, my aunt and I, we were so concerned about her kids being scared. And here we are holding each other because they were like, just don't tell us. We're like, oh, my God. Just oh my do God, it. Oh, my God, we're going to die. And the kids were like, cool. We're like, Ugh. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good time. It's funny how that difference is, isn't yes, it? When you're yes. a kid, you're like, oh, this is great. Yeah, yeah, because we were worried about them. I would love to travel overseas. Except for that. And you will not catch me on a ship because that just isn't going to happen. I have a yeah, it's terrible called, feel of It's called fear the Titanic. So. Yeah. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> There's a reason they would, made that movie. There is so much history across there, and I'm friends with a lot of the um, paranormal investigated groups over there and whatnot, and it's just, oh, God, the cool places that they get to go and investigate, mm-hmm. and here I'm like, where can I go that's within, like, two hours, you know, and I'm, <laughs> I, I ain't got nothing. I got, like, Detroit, <laughs> and I'm not going there. Oh, like, yeah. At least not by myself. I, I probably wouldn't take my crew either, but I'm not going to go sneak into some. But, but they get to go to some of these places. I've been here there for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah, that, that is, is just amazing. Amazing. So if we do ever get the chance to go over there, I'm going to try to get us the hookup over there, and they can take us. The, I don't ever want to go by yourself. I want to go with somebody that's been there before in case uh-huh. there is some bad energies or whatever energies. Somebody that knows what's there, because maybe we'd come across the prankster energy, and we wouldn't know what was going on, but they think that they're funny, and we're like, oh my god, and they can be like, oh, it's okay, you know, the real human's with us, it's okay, (laughs) it's okay. Hey, I want to know, speaking of real humans versus aliens, if any of our listeners are going to Area 51. Oh, I heard that story. That's pretty cool. It was all of a sudden all over the Facebook. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what's happening? Don't go there. I'm saying don't. Just don't do it. Aliens are well, real. Well, first of all, you're going to get shot. Just just, uh, admit, yeah, just, just say much. that, okay, they're real. If not, cool. If they are, cool. We clearly are not ready to see them because we can't even handle each other right now. <laughs> yeah, With, with all really. the <laughs> other uh, racism, bad uh, bullying, uh, everything. Yeah. And just the, all the hatred that's in the world. We can't even handle each other. You want to throw aliens into the mix? No, thank you. That's cool. Keep my area 50, 50, well, I almost said 54. <laughs> or 15. <laughs> Whatever area that you want to keep them, have them there. Let them know we say what's up. That's cool. That's, I don't want to see them. They haven't yeah. hurt us, so that's cool if they're there. Let's just keep it on the down low. Yeah. Some things are better left unsaid and seen, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's so one of them. I thought that was nuts. And Sean was like, where did all this come from? I said, honey, it's been on the Facebook for like a week now. He's like, oh, my God. And I said, oh, that got scary. That's kind that, of scary. <laughs> we are out of power, but okay. we are not out of power with this. We're literally just talking about aliens being real. And all of a sudden, the power went down. But here's the thing. We've been out of power since yesterday. We're running on the generator, which means it's probably ran out of gas. But no, I like the darker <laughs> part. And everything uh, went down. They're here. They're do, 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 do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Run. Oh. Run, run. <laughs> I hope he. I hope he's inside so he goes puts gas in it. We just went grocery shopping. I tried to tell him that I wanted to go tomorrow. So I wanted to go to some cemetery. <sighs> oh, it was too hot anyway. But Men don't listen. At the same time, because he was like, if we're out of power overnight, I want to turn off the generator. I'm like, oh, what if our stuff goes? It's not gonna go bad. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, why even take the chance? Why can't I just go grocery shopping? Ta-da! Weird. And it's back. It is back. Mm-hmm. Unless he was messing around with it. It'd be cool if the power just came back on, cause, cause it just would, because. Right now, it's like 160 degrees. We are in purgatory in the state of Michigan right now. It is so temperature-wise, I want to say, and wind-wise. There was a lot of destruction with the storm that just came Yeah, through. it was crazy. Because it did. A lot of it looked like it would have been tornado. Just to, the trees ripped up and crap. Well, when I was driving over here, I was watching the... I was looking up, and I was watching the the clouds spin in a circle. I'm like, oh, that can't huh. be good. I better get to Sarah's house. And then it started Gigi's downpouring. <laughs> Yes, 
the storms last night, I woke up at like, I don't know, 7 o'clock. Sean's like, how did you not wake up when the storms? I was like, what storms? He's like, two huge storms came through. You, Honey, I was at the beach. I went to a few <laughs> graves, graveyards or cemeteries yesterday. It was a like, long day. I was tired. I, mean, I was I, like, what the hell I got happened? home and sat down. I'm like, oh, I'm not getting up. <laughs> That's why I didn't go home. That's why I didn't go to anybody's house. It, it was, I was driving oh. and I'm trying to hurry and. It was a lot of driving yesterday. But the past two days, I probably went over 350 miles. Just And that's just driving in big old circles in the state of Michigan is what it was. The beach was fun, though. The beach was fun. The kids had fun. But with my new obsession with, with cemeteries and whatnot, I just find a weird beauty in them. I said that to somebody at work or something. I there s- is a beauty in them. And they're like, it's I've surreal. never heard somebody refer to a cemetery as beautiful. And I said, the old ones. I said, because there's history there. And to know that each one of those people that are, ba- they had these whole lives, mm-hmm. like, and to just kind of sit there and think about what their whole lives were like. But now they're just, what, they're just a headstone. And it kind of makes you sad, but there's also a beauty in it. And you can watch Mother Nature take its course with death. Mm-hmm. You know, when you got the moss growing up and stuff, and they're yeah. old and whatnot, time takes over Time, kid, if you look at it right, I don't always think time's a beautiful thing. I'm 37. Time, F you when it comes to time on me, but (laughs) (laughs) time on buildings, certain buildings, can be a very beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's It's history. Yeah, all that together. And I used to hate history. Holy crap. But now I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm learning things. Oh, man. Damn it. It's history. Oh, man. Okay, let's bring this back in. What do you think, uh, well, you believe in reincarnation, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, why don't I read what the intro rub says that it is? Well, why because don't that's you? that's what we do here. We say, we tell you guys what the internet says, and then we say what our feelings are. Maybe not mine. What Mama Mary's feelings are. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like to try to read big words on paper. Well, I like listening to you <laughs> try to read big words on paper. <laughs> Reincarnation. Reincarnation is the philosophical or religious concept that an aspect of a living being starts a new life in a different physical body or form after each biological death. It is also called rebirth or transmigration and is a part of the Sam Sarah. It says Sam Sarah. Sure does. Sam Sam Sarah. Sam Sarah. Sam Sarah. Yep. Oh, <laughs> Samsara doctrine of, what's that word? (laughs) Cyclic. Cyclic existence. It is a central tenet of all major Indian religions, namely Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, Sikhism. The idea of reincarnation is found in many ancient cultures, and a belief in rebirth was held by Greek historic figures such as, mm, yeah, you're you're gonna, I, I know that one. Pythagoras, Socrates, and Plato. (laughs) (laughs) It is also a common belief of various ancient and modern religions such as spiritualism, spiritism, theos, what? Theosism, theoism, theso, oh, theos, theosophy. Yeah, what Mama Mary said, (laughs) and and what Mama Mary is going to say here. (laughs) Ekankar. I've never heard of that before. (laughs) Ekankar. And is found as, well, in many tribal societies around the world, in places such as Australia, <laughs> Australia, East Asia, Siberia, and South America. Although the majority of denominations within the... Abrahamic. <laughs> that just sounds funny. Abrahamic religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam do not believe that individuals reincarnate. I, what, Really? Mm-hmm. Particular groups with these religions do refer to as reincarnation. These groups include the mainstream historical and contemporary followers of Kabbalah, the Cathars, Alawites, and Druz, and the I and something else. The historical relations between these sects and the beliefs about reincarnation that were characteristic of Neoplatonism, Orphism. Of the Roman era, as well as the Indian religions, have been the subject of recent scholarly 
Research, Unity Church, and its founder, Charles Fillmore, teach reincarnation. That probably didn't make any sense of no, anything it was I just funny. said. That was great. <laughs> so I apologize for that. No, don't apologize. But we do... But It's all right. Okay, reincarnation is reincarnation. It's just where you come back. And now, everybody kind of believes in it different. You said in there that the Christians don't believe in reincarnation. That's what that said. That's what the well, interweb said. So why do they... And, and nobody take offense to this whatsoever. Oh, it's by just no the means. Thought. But... If you if they don't believe reincarnation, then why do they feel like why do we have Easter? Mm. Why well, do does every single religion celebrate Easter when Jesus rises again when he's reborn? Right, because essentially he's reincarnated in himself. He has risen, and that that's what they believe we with the end that. of times that he he comes back and he walks the earth. See, we just. See, that's, see, that's another that's, question. Like, um, just like the Catholic thing, when they don't believe in purgatory. What you so yeah. you, you believe it, or you know, we don't believe in spirits and ghosts, but we pray to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, He's a Holy Spirit, but you're praying to Him, but you, don't, you can't because you don't believe in Him. Mm-hmm. That's just my opinion. I'm done. That's okay. Everybody is allowed their opinion. That's what we want to. Well, that's what I want to make sure that everybody knows. A paranormal XL. It's okay. Email in your stories. We're not here to judge. Mama Mary and I both have different. Belief systems, mm-hmm. essentially, we're supposed to. That's what makes us different. That's the whole point. Yeah. But we're open-minded enough to a- accept each other for that because as a person, I love her to death. And as a person, do you love me to death? You know I love you to death. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't like a whole heck of a lot of it. I, I like people, but I don't love people. There's not a whole lot of people I let into my circle or do it. anything with them for. Very uh-huh. few people. But you're one it's of them. It's hard to do. It, it really, is. really is. I've people learned that. Drain you. I've learned that. People can be really mean, so I'm just careful. They can. So my question is, since we're talking about the afterlife with this mean people, they, what the hell were they before now? Probably meaner. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, because, again, it goes back to, like, the, the serial killers and such. Mm-hmm. Well, what the hell were they before? I know. You know I mean, just and were it, they just a deadly plague? It could like, be that, you know, when they're serial killers or murderers, it's the first time they've come here. They're at the very first level. It's their first time around. That's your first basic lesson that you're going to learn. Mm-hmm. Killing is ba- bad. Because, <laughs> you know, like a lot of times what happens in, like with karmic situations, we always hear about karma and it's karma's playing out, especially with past life things. So in one of my past lives, I was told that I was a Native American warrior and it was my job to catch enemies and to torture them. And I was very good at it. That That was, you know karmically that was my my role and so I kind of always thought that that's why I went through a situation in this lifetime where I was held and tortured okay sort of like a karmic payback a way of understanding okay this is what you did to somebody now you have to realize what it feels like I think that's what when we talk about karma I, I think there is karma where you make bad choices and bad things come back to you but when um I really yeah when I really hear karmic destiny when in terms like astrology and the planets align like right now with all with the eclipse season it's all karmic everything's gonna come up that you have an address that you need to address but i don't wanna that's exactly (laughs) it and some of it comes from past lives where you're dealing with things that you're paying for in a past life or like you're switching roles you had a mom that was abusive to you and you know you went through a stage in this lifetime where you really didn't want to be a mom to okay. your kids, you know, it's a kind of a karmic switch, and maybe your kid now is your mom in a past life. You see what I'm saying? Is um, energetically, you still remember that? You think that's me and my my real mom? I don't know. It could be. You you, you never know. That's why it's really okay. important to get a past life reading. For sure. And I really think that um, you can make anybody who's a non-believer or a skeptic into a believer as long as they have some kind of um of their own experience. I want to tell you a story about neurosurgeon. Oh, yeah. And um, it's a really cool story. And let me find his name again, or I'll find it for a later time. But like we were discussing it, well, it goes back to like that one that we discussed when we did the out-of-body experiences where he didn't believe in it until it actually happened to him it's a story like that it was he had to experience it to for him to believe it which is essentially what what that is for everybody uh yeah pretty much um he was 
He was a neurosurgeon and he woke up one morning and he just wasn't feeling well and he wasn't functioning at all. And he went into the emergency room and they found that he had an infection in his brain. So they put him into like a seven day coma so that they could heal, they could heal down, they could heal the infection. But so basically they completely shut down his brain. So I'm probably just going to read from it just because it's the best way to do it. Oh, for sure. Um, But the story he talks about, so for, you know, it just tells how it confirmed the afterlife for him when he didn't Mm -hmm. believe it, you know, believe in the afterlife at all. Before this happened. Yeah, so he writes, um, There's no scientific explanation for the fact that while my body lay in coma, my mind, my conscious inner self, was alive and well. While the neurons in my cortex were stunned to complete inactivity by the bacteria that had attacked them, my brain-free consciousness journeyed to another larger dimension of the universe, a dimension I never dreamed existed, in which the old pre-coma me would have been more than happy to explain with simple impossibility. But that dimension, in rough outline, the same one described by countless subjects of near-death experiences and other mystical states, is there. It exists. And what I saw and learned, there had a place in me quite literally in a new world, a world where we are much more than our brains and our bodies, and where death is not the end of consciousness, but rather a chapter in a vast and incalculably positive journey. I'm not the first person to have discovered evidence that consciousness exists beyond the body. Brief, wonderful glimpses of this realm are as old as human history. But as far as I know, no one before me has ever traveled to this dimension, while their cortex was completely shut down, and while their body was under minute medical observation, as mine was for all full seven days of my coma. All the chief arguments against near-death experiences suggest that these experiences are the result of minimal transient or partial malfunctioning of the cortex. My near-death experience, however, took place not while my cortex was malfunctioning, but while it was simply turned off. This is clear from the severity and duration of my meningitis and from the global cortical involvement documented by the CT scans and the neurological examinations. According to current medical understanding of the brain and mind, There's absolutely no way that I could have experienced even a dim and limited consciousness during my time in the coma. Once I started to travel, it took me months to come back to terms with what happened to me, not just the medical impossibility that I had been conscious during my coma, but more importantly, the things that happened during that time. Toward the beginning of my adventure, I was in a place of clouds, big, puffy, pink, white ones that showed up sharply against a deep blue, black sky. Then I was higher than the clouds immeasurably higher, flocks of transparent, shimmering beings arced across the sky, leaving long, steamer-like lines behind them. Birds or angels? These words registered later when I was writing down my recollections, but neither of these words do justice to the beings themselves, which were quite simply different from anything I've ever known on this planet. They were more advanced. They were higher forms. A sound huge and booming like a glorious chant came down from above, and I wondered if the winged beings were producing it. Again, thinking about it later, it occurred to me that the joy of these creatures, as they soared along, was such that they had to make, they had to make this noise. That if the, the joy didn't come out of them, this is the way they would simply not otherwise be able to contain it. The sound was palpable, and almost material, like a rain that you could feel on your skin, but your skin doesn't get wet. Seeing and hearing were not separate in this place where I now was. I could hear the visual beauty of the silvery bodies and the scintillating beings above. I could see the surging joyful perfection of what they sang. It seemed that you could not look at or listen to anything in this world without being a part of it, without joining in with it in some mysterious way. Again, my present perspective, I would suggest that you couldn't look at anything in that world at all, for the word at itself implies a separation that did not exist here, because everything was connected. Everything was distinct, yet everything was so up also a part of everything else, like the rich and intermingled designs of a Persian carpet or a butterfly's wing. It gets stranger still. For most of my journey, someone else was with me. A woman. She was young, and I remember what she looked like in a complete detail. She had high cheekbones and deep blue eyes. Golden brown tresses framed her lovely face. When first I saw her, we were riding along together on an intricately patterned surface, which after a moment I recognized as the wings of a butterfly. In fact, millions of butterflies are all around us, vast, fluttering waves of them. 
dipping down into the woods and coming back up around us again. It was a river of life and color moving through the air. The woman's outfit was simple like a peasant's, but it had colors of powder blue, indigo, and pastel orange, peach. And they had the same overwhelming, super vivid aliveness that everything else had. She looked at me with a look that, if you saw it for five seconds, it would make your whole life up to that point worth living, no matter what had happened in it so far. It was not a romantic look. It was not a look of friendship. It was a look that so was somehow beyond all of these, beyond all the different compartments of love we have drawn here down here on earth. It was something higher, holding out those other kinds of love within itself, while at the same th- time being much bigger than all of them. Without using any words, she spoke to me. The message went through me like a wind, and I instantly understood that it was true. I knew so in the same way that I knew that the world around us was real, not some fantasy passing and, and insubstantial. The message had three parts, and if I had to translate them into earthly language, I'd say they ran like this. You are loved and cherished, dearly forever. You have nothing to fear. There is nothing you can do wrong. The message flooded me with a vast and crazy sensation of relief. It was like being handed the rules to a game I've been playing all my life, without ever fully understanding it. We'll show you many things here, said the woman, again without actually using the words, but by driving her conceptual essence directly into me. But eventually you will go back. To this, I had only one question. Back to where? Isn't that a cool story? That is a cool and story. Give me a second, and I will find the author, because he wrote a book. Okay. And um, so he wrote a book about this whole experience. But I find it fascinating that that's what happens. And I would say that that woman was one of his guides. Okay. And, you know, that's you, the the guide's biggest message is for you, is no matter what, you're loved. And you can't do, you might make, you might make mistakes, but they're not wrong, because you were meant to make them. Right. Otherwise, you're not going to learn. Right. So you maybe you did something that was devastatingly embarrassing and you let down a, a million people. That's okay. Because while it was a mistake, it wasn't wrong. You were meant to learn from it. What's wrong is if you continue to make it over and over again and you don't learn from it. Right. It's okay not to be perfect. We're supposed to be imperfect. That's why we came here to be human. If you want to be perfect, you have to go back to the afterlife because that's where you find the perfection. Okay. Boy, huh. that was a speech. Yeah, it was. I'm like, oh, that was no. Like, that was, like, all emotional. But it had <laughs> your butterflies in there. I didn't read that it part. Did. See? It was, <laughs> There's, like, all wrapped up into one right there. <clears throat> but let me cute. see if I can find it. Okay, up. you look for that, and I'm going to read the responses I got from the Facebook question of the week, which, which was, what is everyone's thought on afterlife? Julie says, my beliefs are very complicated. I believe our energy continues on after our body is no more. And that energy either stays or moves on to another overlapping plane of existence. I believe in the stone tape theory. I believe aliens are somehow connected to one of these overlapping planes. This is why I become an investigator. Became an investigator. I want to find evidence to help prove my theories or even maybe prove myself wrong. Another one I got was, I feel that our soul is energy and we can go anywhere we want. Marty says, I believe that we become spirits and watch over our families and friends. I know that some of my relatives, including my dad and grandparents, are watching over me and my family. Another one is, I believe that even though our physical body is gone, our energy spirit lives on. I feel that we have the ability to go back and forth between different planes and dimensions. Um, The one after that is, I believe we just die. Another one is, I believe in it. I've been visited by loved ones who have passed. Another one. I'm a Christian and believe in the Bible. The problem I'm having lately is how much of the Bible is correct and what was left out. I'm on a new journey, and part of that is spiritual. I definitely believe in heaven and hell, but I thought you would like that one. Yeah. Because she she is Christian and believes in the Bible, but she's questioning beyond the Bible, which I thought was that was very brave of her to be, be Being open anything. to the possibilities, definitely. That's, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's really all we ask because everybody, you know, they don't believe in the same thing. People are usually connected to something, you know, whether it be a type of religion or belief, we're all different, but being able to realize that it could be different, you know, that's what you want to believe. That's when I say, okay, what I want to believe and what's happening, going to happen, I don't know what's going to happen, but what I want to believe, Mm -hmm. and essentially that's ultimately what religion is too. You choose what one best fits you. Yeah, which one fits you, because I think, I feel like there's truth to the Bible. 
I don't mm-hmm. think there's complete truth. I think, um, or well, like part of she me, said some of it was left out. She feels, yeah, I, I think so. I think, um, I think at the time it was written, it was so the, the whole point of the universe and God's purpose is for everybody to have faith because mm-hmm. faith brings love and faith raises the vibration. So to create a book that keeps the faith, right? I think the per- that's the purpose. I think there, but there are, there's, there's truths in there that have been left out. Now that oh, yeah. the, the author's, Dr. El, um, is it Elbin? No, it's Dr. Eben. Eben, Eben. Alexander. And he wrote, um, the book is Proof of Heaven. Okay. And uh, actually it read. says, uh, if you're a part of Audible, you can download it for free, I do believe. Okay. But that'd be worth reading. Oh, That's yeah. That's a fascinating story. I like, um, I like the inspirational side of it. And I like how, um, what he describes is what I've experienced in some shape or form myself. So for me, since I've experienced myself, I find truth in what he's saying because I've seen it. Right. Just in different ways. Mm-hmm. Everybody's different. You know, it's ex- every experience is different for every person based yes. on what, what, what they through. need and what they're believing. Yeah. Which makes sense. Mm-hmm. And it really does. If you take yourself out of the box of, you know, what you're told to believe. And kind of, okay, okay, you know, yeah. it can work in. Um, we're going to be wrapping this up. Um, I do have a a hometown horror story <laughs> from Hella Angle. I was waiting for the hero. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were. So I was like, say it right, say it right. From Heather Angle. She's actually a listener of ours and oh. um, our brother podcast, True Crime Basement. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. She loves our dog. Aww. Because he posts pictures of Daisy on oh, there. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because she's made herself known on their podcast with the barking. Oh, well, And yeah. she's there, so he's like, F it. This is Daisy. Uh, this is this is what she's bringing to the table. She's she's naughty. I God, love she her. is so naughty, but she is so cute. <laughs> but Heather wrote us in. Um, she said, hey, I have an interesting story. Well, my mom, my boyfriend, and I were on our way back to Nuevo, which is where her parents live from Mount Pleasant at like 1.30 a.m. We arrived back. My parents' place sits isolated away from the road and away from neighbors. Anyway, it was about 2 a.m. My mom went straight to bed. Then I took the couch and instantly fell asleep. But my boyfriend, on the other hand, relaxed in the Lazy Boy watching some TV when all of a sudden he heard a knock at the door. He thought it was weird because it was 2 a.m. and it wasn't our house, so he didn't answer. Anyway, the knock came, became more frequent and he heard <clears throat> some kids sit kids say will you let us in and he was freaked out he didn't go to the door he pant or he picked out of the window wow he peeked out of the window and didn't see anything then all of a sudden they were at the back door doing and saying the same thing then they went to the side of the house and started banging so loud and they said won't you let why won't you let us in we need to come in it continued on for about an hour and then when we woke up That morning, he was telling me all about it, and he was surprised I hadn't woken up because the noise was loud, pretty much shaking the house. He had looked around for an explanation and found the thing thing about black-eyed children. Now, he never seen them, but these kids were trying to get in. and And mind you, my parents have no kids near where they live, and it was like 2 a.m. It really freaked him out, but I just wished I was up for that because I probably would have at least looked out the peephole or the window. No, I wouldn't have. <laughs> so I wonder, though, if he was lucid dreaming. It could be. Anything's possible. Right. Really I'm, not, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it couldn't have been black-eyed children because that, that's a pretty freaky story if you look into black-eyed children for sure. Um, and there's been lots of accounts where people say that, you know, they've encountered black-eyed children. But I want... But even lucid dreaming, they say, you know, again, with the dream thing, they're going on to a different plane. So it did happen, just not in this, yeah, this realm, per exactly. se. It's just a different dimension. The astral that's, plane. Yeah. That's pretty scary stuff. So, with that being said, are you ready to wrap up? I am. Okay. Remember, don't yuck someone else's yum. Ever. <laughs> and we hope to hear from you guys with your stories and questions. Email us at paranormal xl at writeme.com and don't forget to check out the upcoming and don't forget to check out the upcoming event on facebook please go there look it's in it 
but it's going to happen in Hastings, Michigan, at least the first one. The first one you really don't want to miss out on. I mean, they will get better from then on, but it is our first one, and we do tend to be kind of goofy. I have a feeling because that is going to be our first one, we're going to be extra goofy because we're extra nervous, but it's going to, at this moment, it will include a reading from Mama Mary herself. Um, uh, We'll do the live reading where you guys get to come up and... Talk about your own stories? Yep, talk about your own stories. We'll put that in the podcast as well. But we'll also do a Facebook Live at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go on a mini investigation at the location that we are at. And I'll put it out there, too. uh, Whoever wants to um, bring as many friends with them as they can, the person who brings the most, I'll offer a free reading at a later time or free energy work. And that's actually a really, really good deal um, because the readings can go longer than normal, but we're going to try to keep these... You know, 15, 20 minutes yes, yep. only because of the fact that... Trying to the, fit everybody in. Right, the amount of people that we will have there. Now, there are a limited amount of tickets, so please go out there, email us. If you can't find that link, we will ship them out to you. We'll do our own thing. Um, or you can go on the Facebook page and look for it there as well. Yep. But at least look into it. If you find the event on the Facebook page, then that tells everything. But we're going to try to add little things here and there up until then. It is August 10th. So it's a Saturday. Yeah, you're going to want to start buying the tickets now because they're starting to sell. Yes. Yeah, so we're pretty excited about that, which is awesome. Also, don't forget Patreon. Go at least look at it. Like I said, we're not by any means saying, hey, you got to give us this. You got to give us that for us to keep doing this. No, we enjoy this. That's why we started it. We'd like to keep doing it. Maybe give you guys some better quality stuff. Well, as far as listening wise, better microphones and stuff. So if you guys do know, donate, that's what it will go to. Better recording equipment. It'll just be better. <laughs> That's all that. You know what? You can even just ship us some wine if you want to give back. Oh, That's cool, too. That would be great. Yes. Yes. You know what? I do like I do like homemade wine. I've had it a few times. I do enjoy homemade wine and trying different people's wine. So if you make your own... Some moonshine. Yeah. Or well, moonshine. That's a, yeah. that's a kind of a big jump from wine. But... That's good. We can throw it in the lawnmower. We can drive around the lawnmower. <laughs> it's a bunch of purposes. I <laughs> see. I got a lot of family that makes homemade moonshine. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't mean that. Huh? <laughs> huh? Wait. What? what happened? That's legal in Kentucky. What? That's who makes it. <laughs> but again, go check us out on Facebook. All the stuff that we just talked about will be on Facebook. Paranormal XL. Bam. There you have it. So we big heart you guys. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. We will not see you next week. We will see you August 10th is when we will see you. That's right. (laughs) We will talk at you guys (laughs) next week. Talk to you later. Thank you.